So I have no idea if I actually recorded me making the jumper part of this. Um, so I also have no idea if I'm going to be good about recording all the parts of making the shirt. But uh, right now I'm going to be making the shirt of McCall's M7184 um, to go with the jumper because I didn't find, I don't have any shirts that go with the jumper and you would think just like a plain white like v-neck t-shirt would look good with it but it really doesn't. It really does need something with a little bit more shape and structure to it. So I'm going to go ahead and make this and let me show you the fabric I have for it. So this is the fabric I picked out for it. It's a cotton blend. Um, it doesn't really pick up well on camera, but it has a really nice texture to it as well. Um, I got three yards of it and I should need about three yards. I thought it would the, the pattern wouldn't clash too much with the pattern of the skirt because I didn't want just like a plain white shirt. So I went ahead and went with this. So I'm gonna lay this out and get all the pieces cut out and all right, so good news, bad news. Good news is I have a ridiculous amount of ultra lightweight interfacing because Walmart had a bunch of these in the clearance rack for $1.50 a piece. Uh, so I picked up three packs of those and I get to delve into that for the first time, which is exciting. Bad news is I didn't have enough fabric to cut out um, this part, which is the facing of the main fabric, which is kind of frustrating. Um, mostly on me because I didn't read properly and I thought it just said um, interfacing cut to and I didn't realize or I don't know why I didn't think that it didn't need the main fabric but I I don't know uh, my brain just doesn't work today so I was going through my stash looking through things that are pre-washed and I'm like 80% sure this has already been washed uh, but I kind of want to wear this tomorrow and I really don't feel like starting a load of laundry now so this is what I found it's a cotton that I used for um, a shirt for a Stardew Valley Leah cosplay and it's a really light green um, but of all of the fabrics that I have right now I think this one's going to be the least detracting um, of all of them. Um, it's also the thinnest that I have so it's not gonna clash with this um, just the feel of the fabric too much and it doesn't quite match with the skirt but it also doesn't clash horribly so i think this is gonna be my plan and i should have just enough to cut out two of the facings so i'm going to get that done and cut out all my interfacing and come back so here's some interfacing and some pieces so i'm going to go ahead and fuse that i have my iron on i have a damp pressing cloth as the manufacturer's instruction says so I'm just going to fuse this on real quick and then once that's done I'm going to transfer all of the markings on all of the pattern pieces including over here um, I'm going to transfer those over using a water soluble pencil that I have that I may have just misplaced um, but I'll figure it out I'll make it work all right, so I'm gonna kind of combine steps two and three. And while I'm sewing the darts, I'm also gonna sew up the center back seam. The part of me that wants to be in bed before midnight uh, wants to be lazy, but the part of me that knows that I should be doing better uh, will sew this with a French seam. So I will be going through a lot of thread tonight sewing French seams and making sure everything on the inside is nice and finished. So I'm going to combine those two and I'm gonna show you how I pin my darts real quick. So after I have the markings, they're really hard to see, but I'll do it on this one. Um, and I'm gonna redo it nicer later, but just to show you how I pin my darts, is I take a straight pin, I go in the fabric on one side of it, and then I come out of the fabric. I'm not even left-handed, this is really hard. And I pop out of the fabric at the second mark and then I just kinda push this together so that they meet. And I'm gonna do that for all of the markings and then just kinda manipulate it until I get a nice straight line and everything works out well, like this one. So I'm gonna get all the darts pinned and sewn. Um, I also am gonna show you later what I like to do to finish off the darts. So I'm gonna get those sewn, I'm gonna do up the back seam with a French seam. And probably then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this next step and also French seam these shirt pieces together real quick. 
So the way that I finish off my darts to make them really sharp from the front is I actually leave the tails on them when I sew. And then I take these two tails and I tie them in double knots. So, and then at the end of that, then I'll go ahead and clip them. But that's how I finish off all of my darts. So doing a French seam kind of made the next step a little difficult because I had to fold it the other way and all that. Um, but I'm not too worried about it. And there's a little bit of a raw edge here. But what I can do later uh, that I'm not going to do right now is I can make some quick little bias binding and just bind that and make it all nice and pretty. So that's really the only downside of doing this with a so it's inside out right now because I still have pins in it for the next step. Um, but when I did the French seam, or when I sewed the first seam, I did like a test fit and it was enormous. It was like clown large on me. So I decided that when I did the French seam, I would do the second seam an inch with a one inch seam allowance. So that took it in um, a lot and it took it into now a more reasonable size. Um, now my shoulder seams are actually on my shoulder and not here and my waist seam is you know or my side seam is actually at my side and not you know here somewhere um so this fits uh, a lot better it's still loose but it's supposed to be kind of loose and baggy um so i'm happy with it and it's going to be tucked in at the waist into the jumper over there so i'm happy with it right now um so now i'm going to go ahead and do up these little side flap things uh, and then I'll check the directions to see what comes next. All right, so these sleeves are sewn atrociously, but they're sewn. So the next step is to gather the lower edge of sleeve. I think I'm gonna wait on that for a little bit because I think there's some more hand stitching I have to do later. And I'm also not gonna touch the sleeve until like 10 steps later. So I'm going to skip that for now and I'm going to do some stay stitching and um, I'm going to sew the collar together, but I'm probably going to have to do some playing around with it because when I took in close to four inches or more than four inches on the top over here with the side seams and the French seams, um, I don't think the collar is going to fit. So I'm going to have to play around with it and dart it and do some stuff because I don't have enough fabric to cut a new one because that's really slow but that's all the fabric I have left and it's all scraps so I'm gonna try to make it work and I'm probably not gonna film all of it um, just because it's gonna be a lot of playing around with things okay so couple things um, I got the collar pinned on and it fits perfectly uh, even with all of this extra stuff being taken in so I don't entirely know what's up with that um, so keep in mind, if you're making this pattern, be prepared to make some adjustments to the collar. Um, definitely get more fabric than you think you need, because this is a fluke of nature that this fits perfectly. Um, there's a little bit sticking out on each side, not a whole lot, but that's okay, because I'm looking in the diagram, and there's a little bit of the shirt sticking out on each side of the collar. So this is kind of weird and I'm not sure how this is going to work out. It's not, the wheels in my brain aren't turning right now. So I'm supposed to baste the entire thing together, leaving this pressed edge free. So normally when you attach a collar, you would baste or you would sew on just this under layer and then you flip it over and then flip it and sew this part. So I'm not entirely sure what's happening that I'm sewing all of this because I know the facing's going in next and maybe it's just my brain not working right. I don't see how the facing getting sewn in is gonna fix that and make everything look nice and pretty. But I guess we'll see when we get there. So I'm gonna go get this basted on real quick all the way across uh, and leaving this free and we'll see what happens. Oh, also while I'm at it, I'm probably going to go to the next step, which is just to finish the long edge of this and stay stitch this just because I'm at the machine and it'll be nice and quick and simple. All right, so I have the facing pinned in. Um, I just finished it with a simple rolled hem to stitch it with a zigzag stitch because I find it keeps things flatter and it'll keep it nice and flat over time through washing and not have it kind of unravel over itself. So I have this 
pinned um, and I totally see what's going on now and everything's going to make sense because when I stitch this up because of the way the collar is when I turn this over everything's going to be nice and tucked away and I totally okay everything makes sense now I feel better um, another thing about the pattern is maybe I just cut it out wrong but these two notches don't match up um, it's not the end of the world though because I have some leftover main fabric on the ends of these pieces, but I think that'll work out perfectly fine because then I can roll hem when I do the main or the final hem. I can kind of roll it up and cover the edge of this, and then I don't have to worry about rolling this interfacing and having something really bulky there. So I think that's going to work out. I'm not worried about that, and I think it works out better. Um, not quite as much leftover on this side, which this side um, lined up with this fold perfectly. Not sure why this side didn't, because I cut everything symmetrically at the same time. Uh, maybe it just warped, who knows. So now I'm going to go ahead and get all of this stitched up. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll just see what I have to do next after that. All right, so I went ahead and sewed up the uh, cuff portions together. So that's done. I also skipped ahead and real quick gathered this up, uh, the sleeves up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch the non-interfaced portion to um, the outside, right sides together, flip it over to the inside, and then stitch that probably by hand. I also have to do the inside of the collar by hand, but I might save that to do at work tomorrow on my break. Um, yeah, that's what I'm probably going to do. Alright, so here's the shirt, mostly finished. I feel like it looks better from a distance than it does up close, but that's fine. Um, I don't have the buttons on yet. I'm going to do the buttonholes tonight, and then I'm going to sew on the buttons tomorrow during my work break. Um, so I just have it kind of pinned where it will be. Um, so I'm going to try on the jumper real quick and show you how the whole thing looks. All right, so the shirt definitely is still a little big. I'm gonna see what I can do with buttons to try to fix that. Um, yeah, I I kind of like it. I think the collar stands up a little weird, which is kind of weird. You can see it stands up completely on its own, uh, which is kind of weird because this is the lightest interfacing that I've ever worked with and it's still really stiff. Um, I might not have even needed true interfacing for this. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and finish the buttonholes tonight and then bring the buttons with me to work tomorrow to finish and wear out. Although I will say the uh, pattern clashing is a bit tacky even for me. It doesn't really go that well together, but maybe, maybe I can make it work. We'll see. So here's what the final blouse looks like. Um, I kind of like how loose it is up top. Um, I just really should have moved the button or the sleeve buttons in because they're kind of awkwardly big. Um, I kind of like the collar. It's really stiff, but it's giving me kind of a Jackie O moment, so I'm I'm cool with it. Um, so this green color, yeah, once I got the buttons on um, and everything sewn in, it made the collar and the facing lie uh, perfectly, so much nicer than it did before. Um, and the green color is the same, like, value as this blue, and under black light they look the same, which worked out for me, because that's the lighting I was just in when I went out dancing. So, yeah, this was the uh, finished outfit. My room's kind of a mess. Um, yeah, so the patterns clashed with each other a little bit more than I was hoping, um, but... Yeah, this is what I'm left with, and I'm pretty happy with it, and I got compliments on it all night, so I'm happy. Alright, so final thoughts on this pattern before I sign off. The skirt pattern was pretty true to size, if I remember correctly, um, and was accurate to the measurements. The shirt was not. According to my measurements, I should have made the XL, so I did make the XL, and as you saw, it was enormous on me. And then when I cut out the collar XL, it actually worked out pretty perfectly with having taken the extra large in um, about four inches all around. So that was a little bit weird, 
uh, with the pattern so just keep that in mind that if you're making this you might need a lot of extra fabric to be able to cut out the collar a couple of times um, because I had exactly three yards of this fabric and it shrunk in the wash which is probably why I ran out but um, yeah it says that I would need three and a quarter yards and even that extra quarter yard wouldn't have covered the facing that I needed for it. So definitely go ahead and get yourself an extra half yard of whatever fabric you're making. Um, the skirt def or sorry the shirt definitely came out really big um, and go by your own markings and not necessarily the pattern markings in terms of button placement because I got a huge um, wrist hole here and it keeps sliding down my arm I couldn't bunch it up well so yeah overall I did kind of like this pattern um, I don't really like the pieces together that much in the actual light I don't think it goes together too well but in black light they match almost perfectly so yeah maybe I'll make another shirt maybe not knowing me I'm gonna be lazy and not uh, but yeah I like how all of this turned out even with all the you know pattern adjustments and I think it's very comfortable and I could probably get some more use out of this with probably like a long brown kind of pencil skirt but yeah that's what I have for all of you I hope you liked it if there's anything that you want me to try if there's any specific pattern that you'd like me to go through so that I can make all these mistakes and figure things out before you do um, let me know and I'll be happy to do that